And is that storage uh, permanent, temporary, or what? That's temporary storage for use by the operating system. Okay. So is it possible then, is it eventually overridden? When the operating system deletes that, um, it is then set up for being overwritten, yes. Okay. And you said set up for being overridden. It may not be automatically overridden at that time. Is that accurate? That's correct. It would be overwritten when the, when the um, space that's occupying the, the image is, is needed. Okay. And is that when it's stored in unallocated space? Yes. Unallocated space would be when the index, which the operating system maintains for uh, where the data is being stored, is changed by the operating system to indicate that the location of that particular screenshot is no longer necessary, but the operating system does not go out and overwrite that data until it's needed. Okay. So uh, is it, is it, and maybe, maybe this is inaccurate, I'm, is it accurate to say that there is basically two storage areas? Uh, one would be called an allocated space and one would be called unallocated? Allocated space are those files um, where the, the, the operating system is keeping track of what's going on, and the other, the unallocated space is the storage area that's no longer being used by the operating system, but may be used at a future time. Okay. So allocated would be uh, data, things that the operating system is going to need to call up again. Correct. Okay. And unallocated is the operating system's made a determination it no longer needs it, so it's going to put it in the unallocated area. It, mar it marks the index stating that that area can now be rewritten to. Okay. And it will stay in that unallocated area uh, until and if the time that it's actually overridden with uh, additional data. That's correct. And, okay. and generally, the larger the storage area, the less likely that data will be overwritten over time. Okay. Now, sir, in your capacity as a forensic examiner with the DEA, uh, did you conduct analysis on the iPhone as it relates to this case? Yes, I did. Okay. You know, I have a people's exhibit, and we will be entering into a stipulation. Uh, but I have a, uh, a plastic bag uh, that I'd first like to uh, show the witness. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. Uh, and actually, I'll mark this bag and its contents at this time, Your Honor, is, I believe, People's 83? Correct. Okay. Placing a P83 on the outside of the bag. Mr. Marks, I want to ask you, first of all, about the outside of this bag, People's 83. Uh, do you see the date on there, July 28, 2009? Yes, I do. Okay. Is that the date this was recovered, to your knowledge? That's correct. And does that also indicate your name or initials somewhere on that uh, envelope? Yes, it shows that I opened it. Okay. And let me take this. For the record, Your Honor, I'm now going to open up the plastic envelope of People's 83 and remove the contents. You may. I'm cutting the uh, top section of the plastic evidence bag. I'm removing... Um, an iPhone wrapped in bubble wrap, undoing the packaging, and removing what was uh, the iPhone, which was collectively marked as People's 83 for identification. Uh, may I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Mr. Mark, showing you uh, People's 83, the iPhone, uh, does that reflect uh, the N3 number that you referenced, this phone in your uh, documentation, your analysis? That's correct. That's a sticker that I placed on the phone. Okay. At this time, Your Honor, I propose a stipulation that uh, People's 83 booked as LAPD item 161, an iPhone with telephone number 702-862-0973, was recovered by law enforcement from defendant Conrad Murray on July 28, 2009. While in law enforcement possession, this iPhone was analyzed by forensic analysts from the Department of Justice Drug Enforcement Administration. And following the forensic analysis, the iPhone was booked uh, and returned into LAPD police custody. Counsel, so stipulate? Is this, uh, it, we're talking about... Why, why don't you take a moment and, yeah. and confer informally off the record? 
Council are doing so? I'm sorry, yes. so stipulated so by the defense? Yes. yes. By the people? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. The stipulation is accepted by the court. And as I've indicated earlier, ladies and gentlemen, when both parties enter into a stipulation, that means they accept the facts as true, those facts are not disputed, and those facts must be accepted by you as true. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Mr. Marks, then, uh, on your analysis of uh, Conrad Murray's iPhone, uh, did you find uh, screenshots on the phone uh, related to the date of June 25th, 2009? Yes, I did. And is it fair to say that a very large number of screenshots were located, but only certain ones could be uh, attributed to a particular date? That's correct. Okay. Putting it up on the Elmo here. Uh, can you see that, Mr. Marks? Yes, I can. Okay. And on this screenshot, uh, referencing different names, Tim Woolley, uh, Kathy Jory, uh, is there a date and time stamp on the bottom of this screenshot? Yes. Is that June 25th, 2009 at 7.03 a.m.? Yes. Okay. And with that date and time reference on the screenshot, what does that mean to you as a forensic uh, analysts as it relates to this iPhone? It means that the mailbox that um, is depicted on the screen was last queried for new mail on that date and time. Okay. And so on June 25th, 2009, at 7.03 a.m. or thereafter, this screenshot was on the iPhone? That's correct. Okay. And someone by necessity then was manipulating the iPhone to make that screenshot appear? Yes. I have another screenshot, Your Honor, reflecting a date of nine, excuse me, a date of 625.09 and a time of 9.45 a.m. Mr. Gorg Mr. Gorgian's reviewing the exhibit. I'd ask that that be marked People's 85 for identification. Yes. Mr. Mark, showing you People's 85, first referencing the bottom uh, of that screenshot, do you see the date of 625.09 and a time of 9.45 a.m.? Yes. Okay. And again, does that indicate to you that someone was manipulating and viewing that uh, screenshot uh, at 9.45 a.m. on 625.09 or basically immediately thereafter? It's an expert. The witness is an expert, 801. Overall. Yes, it does. Okay. And in reference to this particular screenshot, uh, there's a number, uh, this screenshot actually shows three different references uh, to a Connie Nunn uh, apparently sending emails to uh, this iPhone. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Okay. And were you able to then track down these particular emails to uh, determine the contents of the emails? Yes. Okay. John, I have a seven-page document uh, depicting an email with a header date of June 24th, 2009 at 5.33 p.m., subject line being Omar Arnold dash progress notes accompanied by the body of the email and multiple documents. May this be collectively marked as People's 86? Yes. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. And again, counsel's had a chance to review the emails. I just want to, uh, Mr. Mark, so you were able to, again, follow up and locate these various emails from a Connie Nung uh, to Conrad Murray? Yes, I was. Okay. And previously marked as people's 86 for identification, um, and I believe I had indicated it's got a sent date of June 24th, 2009 at 5.33 p.m. with the subject line Omar Arnold Progress Notes, uh, and it's a multiple, multiple page document. Mr. Marks, first showing you page one, which again, may we dim the lights, Your Honor? I think I'll need them dim. We may. Regarding these various emails, uh, Mr. Marks, is this the header of the email saying from Connie Nunn, and that's NG, last name? 
Yes. Okay. To uh, Dr. Murray, uh, GCA at sbcglobal.net. Yes. Okay. With the date of June 24, 2009 at 5.33 p.m.? Yes. And you see the subject of Omar Arnold progress notes? Yes. Okay. Going to page two of People's 86, which is the body of that uh, email, indicating, hello, Dr. Murray. Here are his progress notes. Please let me know if you can't open it. Thank you, Connie. Is that the body of the email that you recovered from the iPhone? Yes, it is. And then there are a number of documents attached to that email? That's right. Okay. Uh, the first page of those attachments, and I'll zoom in and out of this, but first to get a view. Uh, are these the handwritten notes of the first page of that attachment? Yes. Okay. And these handwritten notes reflect various dates uh, of first date being, appearing to be November 19, 2008, insomnia, anxiety. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Okay. And proceeding down the page, there are multiple entries uh, of specifically September 26, 2008, February 1, 2008, April 12, 2007, March 2007, uh, which appears to be the last date on that page. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Going to the next page and the next attachment as it relates to People's 86, yeah. and if, first I'll zoom out. Do you see this uh, medical document uh, or medical record reflected here, sir? Yes. Okay. Zooming in uh, reflects the name of Omar Arnold, correct? Yes. Okay. And various handwritten, uh, excuse me, handwritten notes? Yes. Uh, including primary MD, uh, Dr. C. Murray? Yes. Okay. And some handwritten notes uh, regarding uh, C slash O apparently complained of and some handwritten notes on that document? Yes. Okay. Going down that document, uh, some other handwritten notes um, going all the way down to uh, assessment um, and a plan. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Okay. Going to the next page of People's 86, uh, again, zooming in, has the same name, Omar Arnold, uh, yes. with a date of January 11th, 2006. Yes. And again, various handwritten notes on that document. That's correct. The next page, uh, again, showing Omar Arnold and a date of visit January 11, 2006, with handwritten notes? Yes. And the last page of this email attachment, again reflecting the name Omar Arnold uh, and handwritten notes. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Going to the next email that you recovered as it relates to Connie Nunn, Your Honor, I have a four-page document Email sent date June 24th, 2009 at 5.34 p.m. Uh, subject Omar Arnold dash 2D dash echo. May this be collectively marked People's 87? Yes. And again, before I get to People's 87, Mr. Marks, going back to People's 85, the screenshot, uh, do you see on that document uh, the last line visible on that screenshot being uh, Connie Nunn, Omar Arnold, 2D Echo, the date on the screenshot being June 25th and the reference on the iPhone being yesterday? Yes. Okay. In relation to that particular email reference Omar Arnold 2D Echo. Were you able to retrieve that email? Yes, I was. And then going to that email, People's 87 for identification, I'm gonna zoom in on the header of that email, 